In this lesson, we'll add the connections between the columns and the beams. So let's continue. Okay, so we're making pretty good progress, and our detail is really starting to increase. We've got some connections down here, so let's go ahead and finish off our connections with our columns and beams. Uh, but before we do, let's add one more beam here. And I'm, Remember I mentioned there's a couple of ways you can add your beam. We'll add our final beam here. Um, go to Structure, we'll go to Beam, and we'll do it in 3D view. I'm going to make sure I'm on 3D snapping, and if we're adding multiple in this view, we keep Chain Command on, but... We're not going to really add multiple, so I'm not really too concerned with having chain on or off. But I do want to have a straight line because I do want to have a straight uh, beam. So what I'm going to do is just scroll in where I get a really good view, and I'm going to let Revit snap it in place there. Once I see that circular point, I'm going to click there, and I'm going to drag it to this point. And in 3D view, Revit will add that beam. But it would have added it there, but we just got to change it this guy's position here. Um, right now, um, it's set to top of tower and it's 10 feet above the top of tower and we really don't need an offset on this one um, we'll just keep it right at the top of our tower so I'm gonna get rid of that 10 and bring it right back down but you can see we can really easily draw our members in place uh, for three pieces um, let's do the same thing for this side here to we'll connect these guys here and then we'll jump to our connections um, so again we'll go to beam and let's go hunt down a tube. We're going to go to the smaller 4 inch tube here. So I'm going to load. We'll go with uh, structural framing. Steel. And let's look for our hollow steel section here if we can find it. Boom. Perfect. And this one I want it to be a little bit smaller than my columns. Um, we'll have this one be a 4 inch. And again I want it to be square so I'm going to make sure I can find a square one. So I'm going to pay attention to what's going on with that dimension under type and also the shape. So once I see fours, so again, I want four by four by quarter inch. Perfect. There she is. Click OK. And again, I'm going to stay in my 3D snapping view, and I'll show you since we're working at the endpoints here, I can really easily get my stuff modeled in 3D. Again, i got to make sure I gotta get my parameters set here. We don't want to be 10 feet above this level. So it's always good to set that ahead of time. So when I go back here and let me add my beam again, I'm going to make sure the Z offset is set to zero because uh, we're not going to be offset on this level. So I now have the beams in place for the top. So now let's add some connections here. Uh, so let's jump to the ground floor and let's go hunt down some connection pieces. Um, I'm going to hit TL to adjust my detail lines here. Right now we're on thick lines. TL will give me my thin lines. And we're structure tab component and we're going to load family and we're going to work with structural connections so structural connections steel and I am interested in this guy here double angle with bolt and weld connection so we got bolts to the beat to the columns and this is welded to the beam I'm going to click OK and I know I'm going to probably have to make some changes because my uh, columns are pretty small um, but what I like to do is get this in place really quick um, make the adjustments I need and then copy from there. So again, I'm going to make sure I'm getting my midpoints lined up. So I'm going to let Revit snap things into place for me. And you'll notice that connection piece I just placed, we really can't see it at this point. But that's just because we need to uh, adjust its uh, placement. So I'm going to jump back to level one. And again, we're not going to make the same mistake we made when placing our other beams. We're going to go component. And we're going to want to set this one 10 feet. So it's going to line up with our uh, beam for now. And later on, we'll tweak it according to where the engineer wants it to be. So for right now, we'll keep it at 10. This way, it will be visible in our view as well. Um, so I'm going to click Apply. We'll get him in place. And we should be able to see him nicely right there. Exactly. So I'm going to click on him now. And I can already see there's a few changes I need to make here. Um, first, I'm going to definitely bring these two angles closer together once we have the bolts in place. And then secondly, I need to find a, a connection piece here that doesn't have this giant overlap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit type, and I can make these adjustments uh, where I need to make them. So let's choose a different angle size. So I'm going to go with maybe a 2 by 2 by quarter inch. So I'm going to go down here and look for a 2 by 2 by quarter inch. And I think that that should work for us. We'll keep the same bolts for now. But let's change the number of bolts. So you could do the treat this just how we did with our base plate. Once you get it in place, you can make the adjustments however you need to. So I'm going to click Apply, OK. 
And I think that's going to work. But the only thing I want to do now is close the gap between here. And then I really want to get a better grip onto this beam here. So we can, after we get that gap closed, we can adjust our cutback again. So while I'm here, let's simply drag this guy down here. Because we know this is going to be a nice, tight, snug connection here. I want to make sure it stops right at the edge here of my flange. It looks like this one can stand to move just a bit more. Bingo. So now that I have that in place, um, let's now make an adjustment to our cutback. So I'm going to click on my beam, and let's add a half an inch of grip on there. So I'm going to cut that. I'm going to make that cutback just half an inch less. So instead of an inch, we'll convert that to half an inch on both sides. So we've got better grip here, and I know my bolt's going to fit. So if you did get something in place, you can always make adjustments according to what the engineer needed, or if there's changes later on down the line with your design, you can make those changes accordingly. So now, let's, now that we have that one in place, let's jump to our, it looks like maybe north elevation. We'll get it adjusted vertically, and we'll simply copy the rest of them. So there's my connection there. And I want to drop him down. I don't want him to be um, right center. We want him to be just a little bit above that center point. So right now he's set to 10. Let's see what happens if you set that to 9 feet 11 inches. That's a pretty good position. I like that. So we'll keep that there. And now that we're in there, let's copy out the rest of this level. So I'm going to take what I have here, and I'm simply going to copy it down below. So we'll go take this guy. We'll copy him, grab him from his center point, and we'll take him down here. And add a connection there. So now that we have that connection in place, let's copy over another one. Let's go ahead and add the one that's supposed to go here. So all I'm going to do is rotate this piece here, 90 degrees. We'll go ahead and move him, grabbing him from the center, and placing him like so. And now we can just copy him over onto the other side. And we'll just kind of keep this copy and rotate uh, process going here. Perfect. So now I'm going to go ahead and copy this one again. I'll get this one in here in place as well. And we'll rotate him so he fits along this side. So I'm going to use my move button, grab at that center point, try my best to align on this center point here. So far, so good. So it looks like we've got our bottom done. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing for our top. Um, I'm just going to co copy this one real quick or let's just copy while we're up here we'll take the one we placed first let's go ahead and copy him simply click and drag and rotate to the position we want and move again i'm making sure i'm getting everything lined up with my uh center points and midpoints this way i know i got good connections and some structural soundness going on here so again, we're just going to duplicate. And again, that's copy button is really going to become your best friend. You're really going to get comfortable using that. You're going to really become dependent on it as well. So again, we'll copy this one. Rotate it. And we'll just drag them right back by grabbing our midpoint and placing them on this midpoint. So we're in pretty good position here. Let's make sure we have all ours in place. So we got two, four six eight connection pieces now we can use the magic button we can go ahead and select that one and right click and i'm going to select all the instances visible in my view and now we're going to use the copy button but we're going to copy it to our clipboard so copy the clipboard drop down align to selected levels and let's add those connection pieces to levels two three four five just in case and if not we can erase five so now i'll go to 3D view and all our connections are in pieces and yes got a little extra here on top not a problem I'm simply gonna click on those guys we'll start getting rid of them out of our view and then we can orbit around and make sure everything looks good tight and snug and we can come back and add connection pieces here as well so it looks like all our pieces are in place um, let's go to the top of our level here and let's knock out the rest of these guys connecting these pieces here so We'll go to top of the tower. Um, I'm going to go to medium there. And let's see if we can add another uh, connection piece here. So we'll go back to component. Get that 
in place here. Looks like we may need to adjust our view on this one as well, so we'll adjust our view range. Let's go with 10 feet here. And 10 feet for our cut plane. So I should be able to add that component now and see it with ease. And I'm going to go back to 3D view really quick just to make sure. I'm placing him on the right side. So we need to place it on the north side, the top here. So we'll jump back to top of tower. This is our north side, and we're connecting that to that. So we'll go to component, grab our piece, and make sure our midpoints are lined up. Drop him in place. Do the same thing on this side, component. And I'm going to rotate him. And use our move button. And make sure I line up my midpoints. And I'm going to jump to 3D view to make sure this uh, happened right. Oh, looks like they're off just a bit, but not a problem. I should have left those other ones, um, really. But I'm going to click on those. And again, we don't want an offset of 10 feet. So we'll keep it at zero. That should be in the right place there. Boom, nice position. Okay, so we have our angle connections here. And we'll, uh, we're actually at a point now where we can jump to working with, with maybe with some lateral uh, bracing. So in our next lesson, we'll add some gusset plates and some lateral bracing uh, to really strengthen up our design here.